Napoleon Bonaparte rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most iconic military leaders in history, renowned for his tactical genius, unwavering determination and strategic brilliance. His military campaigns were marked by innovative tactics, ability to outmaneuver his adversaries, and brought him victory after victory, resulting in the expansion of French territories across Europe. And arguably, I'd say he's the best general in all of human history. Today we're going to take a look at Napoleon, the Art of War and Power, which is a beautiful silk bound with golden lettering. That's what captivated me. It had no description, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. And to be honest, this was not really it. It's beautiful. I'm going to give that. But it's actually just filled with maxims, which are military lessons about the code of war. Let's put it like that. It's based and inspired by like all the things preceding and during Napoleon, what he learned. It's basically rules for like the infantry, cavalry, how to lay siege, what a good general is and all of that. All right, it's filled with beautiful art pieces. That's true. But if I wanted a, I don't know, a children's book, book, art book or whatever, I would like rather buy that myself. But it had a couple of takeaways. First qualification of a soldier's fortitude under fatigue and privation. Courage is only the second hardship. Poverty and want are the best school for a soldier. This is an obvious nod to Napoleon's 45,000 ragtag army, to be honest, of ill-fed, ill-equipped, ill-clothed soldiers with which he actually won the campaign. He promised them great wealth and to elevate them out of their want. And just that motivated a bunch of non-professional soldiers enough under his leadership to achieve victory. So this is the obvious nod here, that the illusion and inspiration you can get of uplifting your situation, the hardship, struggling through it, is the hardest motivator. Pieces. Nothing to do but enjoy. Oh, yeah. well, mainly, what I took away from this were different maxims about leadership. So one of them is how speeches during a battle don't really help. So for me, it was more leadership things. I'm taking a project leader role within my current employment. So it's more of like, all right, what can I, you know, put to use from this book, even though it's all about military rule, what can I put to work in real life? One of those was like about morale and leadership. For example, we go out on a, we get a hard assignment. We know it's going to be too late. It's going to be heavy. Uh, there are rumors about it, about being a tough work environment. Well, you in a leadership position, you just giving a speech right there before you get um, on the assignment is not going to do much. It might boost a little bit the morale of like those, the rookies and the veterans. But as the Maxim says, it's about eliminating all the doubts beforehand. If on our way there, I reassure them about X, Y, and Z. If I answer all the concrete, concrete questions and make it clear, then I'll excel at leadership and boost the morale of my crew. If you're in a leadership position, but whoever instructed you is not there physically, or all the instructions were given to you, you know, via mail, whatever, via call, but you're there on the field and you see whatever the task list that was given does not really equate with reality, you in a leadership position or whatever they call here, general in chief, are in the full right to kind of go against the orders like you know military orders you can't really you can't uh, refuse an order by a superior if that superior is right there is what the maxim says but if you with your own perception can see now i should shift resources this way now i should put these people to work there now we're gonna skip that part and move straight over there we're gonna do that a bit later then you're in your full right to do that if that's gonna make you reach the goal in a more successful way but that comes with the fact that you will have to take full responsibility if it goes south so you have to give a proper explanation and reasoning as to why you chose to go down that route because no one wants to be disobeyed what makes actually a good leader 
It's about keeping a cool head. It's about whenever a new impression comes in, you got to be able to, you know, quantify and categorize it immediately so you can adjust to the new shift in reality. All the input, because sometimes we'll be at an event and bam, 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 a whole lot of things go wrong, but you got to be able, or a whole lot of things shifts, you got to be able to identify, quantify them and put them somewhere in your head so you can keep tracking, just like playing Sims. Everyone's bing, bing, bing. Everyone's calling your attention, but you need to, you know, place them in the right place and focus on them whenever you can focus on them. And the importance of giving the weight, the adequate weight, is sometimes you have people in leadership position, any stimuli is going to be like ranked up here for them. They're going to treat them as like high value. Well, they're not, but this just makes your head ring all the time. And you're not going to be able to focus on whatever is happening at that moment or you'll be spreading out resources in a direction where they really shouldn't be going because you still got a whole lot of other things to run. So just imagine this on a micro scale, which is what I do, but extrapolated to like a macro scale, like a whole ass army. So this is where the teachings and maxims came into place in this book. Now, I'll be honest, one of the biggest lessons was actually not really a real lesson. Lesson, it was more of like these words, which I don't know, I found them so beautiful. Indefatigability, promptitude, sagacity, prudence, perspicuity, and conciseness. I don't know. I read these words and I was like, God damn. Like, I got to add this to my vocabulary. The thing with these words is... I read them and I was like, God damn, like these are so beautiful, promptitude, sagacity. I don't even know what it means, but it's mwah. So for me, I was like, all right, cool. I was expecting to learn something about history, this and that, which I did. But for me, the main takeaway of this book were like those words I just mentioned. So my general thoughts on Napoleon's The Art of War. I would definitely not recommend it to anyone. It wasn't per se my favorite read, not at all actually. It looks beautiful. That's about it. I can that's about it. The artwork, selected artwork is beautiful as well. And I mean, it's true to whatever it was. Like it was a military manual. And the thing is, you can imagine we're talking about the late 1700s early 1800s like this is outdated in a way for like regular readers none of y'all are probably in the military except for uh, uh, the two most boys maybe but um aside from that would i recommend it not really it is a cool cover though so if you're interested in hyping and like upping up your bookshelf definitely look for cloth bounds with like letter uh, golden lettering uh, look at this Ain't that sexy, goddamn. All right, but thanks a lot. See y'all later. Keep on reading. Tamo, adios. Ciao.